one of the most common diagnoses, alongside monsters like vegetative vascular dystonia, is undoubtedly biliary dyskinesia. Today we will discuss what can be done about dyskinesia on your own and how to treat it. First of all, let's understand what dyskinesia is. Dyskinesia means per movement, meaning that bile does not flow properly. The whole process of bile flow is as follows. The esophagus transitions into the stomach, which then leads to the duodenum. We have already discussed this diagram with you multiple times before. At the entrance and exit of the stomach, there is a valve called the pylorus. Immediately after the pylorus, the duodenum begins. This is its initial section. This part is called the bulb, which contains receptors. These receptors evaluate the food coming from the stomach, determining the amount and composition of bile needed. The bulb of the duodenum acts as a microcomputer that controls the release of bile. On the right side, we have the gallbladder, which we will schematically represent. The cystic duct merges with the common hepatic duct, forming the common bile duct. It passes under the intestine and enters the duodenum, where the common bile duct flows into it. Approximately in the middle of this junction, the sphincter of Adi is located. This sphincter is the gate through which bile is expelled from the gallbladder. It passes through the common bile duct and enters the duodenum, initiating the process of digestion. Various problems can occur at different levels of this system. The sphincter may experience spasms or swelling, the common bile duct may have spasms or swelling, and the bulb of the duodenum, acting as a computer, may suffer from inflammation or swelling. The gallbladder itself, located above the stomach and liver, may also be affected. Above them lies the diaphragm, which moves up and down as we breathe, acting as a pump for the entire system. Considering all of this, we can identify the main causes that can hinder the proper flow of bile and what can influence it. These include the sphincter, ducts, gallbladder, duodenum, diaphragm, liver, and the absence of bile-stimulating foods. One common factor that can simultaneously affect the sphincter, duodenum, ducts, and gallbladder is stress. However, it is not just any stress but specific stress related to territorial aggression. This occurs when someone feels anger towards an aggressor who has invaded their territory, even though they may not be able to do anything about it. This constant emotional state can have an impact. One possible conflict is the conflict of identification. This means that a person either cannot make a decision or can only make a decision with uncertainty about its correctness. The second reason is the presence of parasites in the bile ducts. Parasites such as Opisthorchus facile and other flukes can attach themselves to the walls of the bile ducts, causing inflammation, edema, and spasms. In the duodenum, giardia is most commonly found, which irritates the intestinal wall and leads to inflammation, spasms, and edema. This reduces the controlling function of the duodenum, resulting in impaired bile flow. There are also many other types of parasites, hundreds and thousands of them, most commonly found in countries with a hot climate. The third reason is a lack of bile-stimulating components in food. The fourth reason is diaphragm spasm. Absence of diaphragmatic breathing leads to stagnation in the liver. Normally, during inhalation and exhalation, the diaphragm moves up and down, acting as a pump for the liver. However, if the diaphragm goes into spasm, this function is not performed, resulting in stagnation in the liver. The fifth reason is thick bile due to constant dehydration. Dehydration leads to increased viscosity of all internal fluids in the body, including blood, lymph, and cerebrospinal fluid. Thick bile impairs its flow. To improve bile flow, it is necessary to eliminate the causes. If stress is the cause, there are three ways to resolve the conflict. Eliminate the aggressor, remove oneself from the territory to avoid reacting, or change one's attitude toward the aggressor and become indifferent. For conflicts of identification, it is important to make a decision and take action or change one's attitude to become indifferent. While dealing with conflicts and making decisions, it is important to manually remove any existing spasms. Self-massage can be done using a special spatula or a regular phone. Place the smooth end of the phone under the right ribs, angled at about 45 degrees inward, for maximum effectiveness. The essence is that you need to press the bulbs of the duodenum and the ducts straight to the spine, 
which goes deep in the middle. So, place it under the right ribs and aim inward, pressing with both hands until you feel resistance, or until pain appears. If pain arises, hold the position until it subsides. Hold for as long as needed until the discomfort is gone. If you hold for a minute or two and there is no change, then you can move on. Slightly vibrate and re-enter the same spot until you feel some changes in the discomfort. It can increase or decrease or radiate to other areas, but it doesn't matter. Hold it until the discomfort stops changing and subsides. This may take a minute or more. After working on this point, move downwards towards the navel, placing the phone under the right ribs and repeat the same movements. Continue moving downwards, working on each point until you reach the vertical line from the right ribs to the navel. Approximately five points should be worked on to ensure thoroughness. For the gallbladder, use the same phone and place it under the same right ribs. Make a motion inward and upward, rotating. If pain appears, wait until it subsides. If there is no pain, wait for one minute and then resurface with self-massage. Now let's move on to the next cause, which is parasites. For eliminating parasites in the bile ducts and duodenum, any natural remedy that stimulates bowel flow and creates an unfavorable environment for parasites will work. One recommended option is a herbal mixture of three parts wormwood, three parts ground cloves, two parts savory, one part tansy flowers, two parts sporish, and one part peppermint. Alternatively, you can use herbal preparations like aspen bark extract, such as populin, or a proven herbal product consisting of three components. The third cause is related to food. For example, if there is a lack of bile stimulating components in your diet, or if you have a low number of meals, it can affect bile flow. Bile stimulating components include fatty, protein rich, bitter, sour, spicy, and salty foods, as well as various spices. After relieving spasms through self massage or addressing any obvious painful areas, it is essential to add bile stimulating elements to each meal to improve bile flow. The number of meals should be a minimum of three per day for preventive measures. However, if we are specifically targeting the dissolution of stones visible on an ultrasound, then the minimum number of meals should be five, consisting of three main meals and two snacks in between. The goal is to avoid long intervals between meals and ensure a constant release of bile. Additionally, there are special citrus oils and protocols available to enhance bowel flow and dissolve stones. Please note that essential oils from pharmacies, even if labeled as 100% natural, are not suitable for consumption and do not meet the required quality standards. The fourth cause is diaphragm spasms and overall hypodynamia. To relieve diaphragm spasms, I recommend watching the relevant video which demonstrates specific movements to improve bowel flow. These movements involve the ribs and the optimal variant includes movements that engage the pelvis and shoulders in different directions to stimulate liver movement, such as rotation, tilting, and general exercises like shaking, running, jogging, and cycling. The fifth cause is dehydration. It is important to drink more water, and the water should be as soft as possible. Soft water refers to water with low salt content. You can achieve this by either boiling or freezing the water. However, the easiest solution is to purchase a reverse osmosis filter, which will provide consistently delicious and soft water. These are the main causes and what can be done about them. Remember that bile is not just some abstract substance. It is an essential substance for digestion. It activates the enzymes of the pancreas, and without it, proteins, fats, and carbohydrates cannot be properly digested. Without adequate bowel flow, you may experience constant bloating, rumbling, as well as pain on the right side and in reflex zones such as the right shoulder, right clavicle, and right temple. It can also cause back pain, right-sided headaches, migraines, and various other symptoms. Furthermore, it is worth noting that proper bile flow indirectly affects joint lubrication. Therefore, if bile flow is poor, joints may start to crack, and blood supply may be compromised leading to less effective joint function. If you want to improve the condition of your joints, it is essential to check how well your bowel flows.